Responsibilities of the Brethren of the Rose Cross The First Postulate It is assumed that the Rosicrucian Order existed historically in accordance with the description of its foundation and subsequent activities published in its manifesto, the Fama Fraternitatis, which is believed to have been written in the year 1610, but apparently did not appear in print until 1614, although an earlier edition is suspected by some authorities. Intelligent consideration of the origin of Rosicrucianism requires a familiarity with the contents of the first and most important of its documents. The Fama Fraternitatis begins with a reminder to all the world of God's goodness and mercy, and it warns the intelligentsia that their egotism and covetousness caused them to follow after false prophets and to ignore the true knowledge which God in His goodness has revealed to them. Hence, a reformation is necessary and God has raised up philosophers and sages for this purpose. In order to assist in bringing about the Reformation, a mysterious person called the highly illuminated Father C.R.C., a German by birth, descended of a noble family, but himself a poor man, instituted the secret society of the Rose Cross. C.R.C. was placed in a cloister when only five years of age, but later becoming dissatisfied with its educational system, he associated himself with a brother of holy orders who was setting forth on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. They started out together, but the brother died at Cyprus and C.R.C. continued alone to Damascus. Poor health prevented him from reaching Jerusalem, so he remained at Damascus, studying with the philosophers who dwelt there while pursuing his studies. He heard of a group of mystics and Kabbalists abiding in the mystic Arabian city of Damkar. Giving up his desire to visit Jerusalem, he arranged with the Arabians for his transportation to Damkar. CRC was but 16 years of age when he arrived at Damkar. He was received as one who had been long expected, a comrade and a friend in philosophy, and was instructed in the secrets of the Arabian adepts. While there, CRC learned the Arabic tongue and translated the sacred book M into Latin. And upon returning to Europe he brought this important volume with him. After studying three years in Damkar, CRC departed for the city of Fez, where the Arabian magicians declared further information would be given him. At Fez he was instructed how to communicate with the elementary inhabitants probably the nature spirits, and these disclosed to him many other great secrets of nature. While the philosophers in Fez were not so great as those in Damkar, the previous experiences of CRC enabled him to distinguish the true from the false and thus add greatly to his store of knowledge. After two years in Fez, CRC sailed for Spain, carrying with him many treasures, among them rare plants and animals accumulated during his wanderings. He fondly hoped that the learned men of Europe would receive with gratitude the rare intellectual and material treasures which he had brought for their consideration. Instead he encountered only ridicule, for the so-called wise were afraid to admit their previous ignorance lest their prestige be impaired. At this point in the narrative is an interpolation stating that Paracelsus, while not a member of the Fraternity of the Rose Cross, had read the book M and from a consideration of its contents had secured information which made him the foremost physician of medieval Europe. Tired, but not discouraged, as the result of the fruitlessness of his efforts, CRC returned to Germany, where he built a house in which he could quietly carry on his study and research. He also manufactured a number of rare scientific instruments for research purposes. While he could have made himself famous had he cared to commercialize his knowledge, he preferred the companionship of God to the esteem of men. After five years of retirement he decided to renew his struggle for a reformation of the arts and sciences of his day, this time with the aid of a few trusted friends. He sent to the cloister where his early training had been received and called to himself three brethren, whom he bound by an oath to preserve and violate the secrets he should impart and to write down for the sake of posterity the information he should dictate. These four founded the Fraternity of the Rose Cross. They prepared its secret cipher language and, according to the Fama, a great dictionary in which all forms of wisdom were classified to the glorification of God. They also began the work of transcribing the Book M but found the task too difficult because of the demands of the great numbers of sick who came to them for healing. Insert The Golden and Rosy Cross From Jaime Figueroa de Rosam Cruiser
It is said of this cross that it is made of spiritual gold and that each brother wears it upon his breast. It bears the alchemical symbols of salt, sulfur, and mercury. Also a star of the planets. And around it are the four words faith, hope, love, and patience. The double-headed eagle, or phoenix, subtly foreshadows the ultimate androgynous state of the human creature. Rosicrucian alchemy was not concerned with metals alone. Man's own body was the alchemical laboratory, and none could reach Rosicrucian adeptship until he had performed the supreme experiment of transmutation by changing the base metals of ignorance into the pure gold of wisdom and understanding. Continued Having completed a newer and larger building, which they called the House of the Holy Spirit, they decided to include four new members in the fraternity, thus increasing the number to eight, seven of whom were German. All were unmarried. Working industriously together, they speedily completed the arduous labor of preparing the documents, instructions, and arcana of the order. They also put the house called Sancti Spiritus in order. They then decided to separate and visit the other countries of the earth, not only that their wisdom might be given to others who deserved it but also that they might check and correct any mistakes existing in their own system. Before separating, the brethren prepared six rules, or bylaws, and each bound himself to obey them. The first rule was that they should take to themselves no other dignity or credit than that they were willing to heal the sick without charge. The second was that from that time on forever they should wear no special robe or garment, but should dress according to the custom of the country wherein they dwelt. The third stated that every year upon a certain day they should meet in the house of the Holy Spirit, or, if unable to do so, should be represented by an epistle. The fourth decreed that each member should search for a worthy person to succeed him at his own demise. The fifth stated that the letters RC should be their seal, mark, and character from that time onward. The sixth specified that the fraternity should remain unknown to the world for a period of 100 years. After they had sworn to this code five of the brothers departed to distant lands, and a year later two of the others also went their way, leaving Father CRC alone in the house of the Holy Spirit. Year after year they met with great joy, for they had quietly and sincerely promulgated their doctrines among the wise of the earth. When the first of the order died in England, it was decided that the burial places of the members should be secret. Soon afterward Father CRC called the remaining six together, and it is supposed that then he prepared his own symbolic tomb. The Fama records that none of the brothers alive at the time of its writing knew when Father CRC died or where he was buried. His body was accidentally discovered 120 years after his death when one of the brothers, who possessed considerable architectural skill, decided to make some alterations in the house of the Holy Spirit. It is only suspected that the tomb was in this building. While making his alterations, the brother discovered a memorial tablet upon which were inscribed the names of the early members of the order. This he decided to transfer to a more imposing chapel, for at that time no one knew in what country Father CRC had died, this information having been concealed by the original members. In attempting to remove the memorial tablet, which was held in place by a large nail, some stones and plastering were broken from the wall, disclosing a door concealed in the masonry. The members of the order immediately cleared away the rest of the debris and uncovered the entrance to a vault. Upon the door in large letters were the words post 120 annos patebo. This, according to the mystic interpretation of the brethren, meant, in 120 years I shall come forth. The following morning the door was opened and the members entered a vault with seven sides and seven corners, each side five feet broad and eight feet high. Although the sun never penetrated this tomb, it was brilliantly illuminated by a mysterious light in the ceiling. In the center was a circular altar, upon which were brass plates engraved with strange characters. In each of the seven sides was a small door which, upon being opened, revealed a number of boxes filled with books, secret instructions, and the supposedly lost arcanum of the fraternity. Upon moving the altar to one side a brass cover was disclosed. Lifting this revealed a body, presumably that of CRC, which, although it had lain there 120 years, was as well preserved as though it had just been interred. 
It was ornamented and attired in the robes of the order, and in one hand was clasped a mysterious parchment which, next to the Bible, was the most valued possession of the society.